Let's get the disappointment out of the way first. This title is a gross exaggeration. This is a short 264 mod list for Skyrim 2011 Legendary Edition, which I have used to convert my playthrough into the planet Athos, which is the main setting of Dark Sun. If you're not familiar with Dark Sun, I highly recommend our introduction to the setting linked below, as well as the All Races in Dark Sun video we did a year ago. As I roam the barren wasteland, dismembering my foes with bone weapons, while the desert around me plans to soon be the battlefield for a war and zombies become more plentiful, I realize I have effectively turned my game into Fantasy New Vegas, and I'm okay with that. If you are too, this video will not be about how to install the full setup, but instead explaining some of the mods I used, really almost all of the mods, they will be on screen for you to follow along, and why I used them, as well as why they were the best choice for each section, as page graphics will be on screen with the mod list for you to copy to your heart's content. Since this is the 2011 Skyrim mod list, and Steam is still okay with you playing it, I have linked to the Steam store page for that version below. It's Skyrim without the mod breaking updates. If you don't know, the situation is that while Bethesda has asked that game to be hidden, at the, the actual Steam where, you know, the SKSE, the script extender for that version of Skyrim is literally a program on Steam, that that still offers offers the, the ability to buy it. This entire video will be largely informal, unscripted, and function as a freeform podcast. As always, a simple disclaimer with anything non-scripted, as I may misspeak on lore issues and I claim no lore master status. With that out of the way, let's begin. Grimdark. Half off! So, before the mod list begins, let's start with why I did this in the first place, and that comes down to four reasons. Fun, aesthetics, richness, and adaptability. When it comes down to fun, I mean, look, I like Dark Sun lore. I like it a lot. I've only played a few games of Dark Sun tabletop with friends, but man, let me tell you, let me tell you, easily the funnest time I've ever had on the planet. Um, as an old Elder Scrolls fan, no longer an Elder Scrolls fan, but as an old Elder Scrolls fan, it really does feel like you put Hammerfell and Morrowind in a blender and took the most interesting elements of them, and, and no wonder, because Dark Sun was obviously a big inspiration for the Elder Scrolls series, uh, at least many parts of it. But then there's the aesthetics. The aesthetics of Dark Sun objectively make no sense. They never will. Um, it's about people running around, often in, in tight leather, uh, in the desert. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to. I love it. It's it's Brahms artwork brought to life. That's also what a lot of the aesthetics in this mod list have been based around. Uh, that's why we used OBIS. That's why we used a lot of different things. The third is richness. Uh, while I have many fond memories of Skyrim and Oblivion, I have come to mistrust Elder Scrolls as a whole, finding the infinite richness of Athos to be a far better setting, being connected to the wider D&D world. I really wanted to get into D&D lore. It's not something you really have to ask permission to do. It's just something you can do in addition to your normal content. Slowly that audience will pile up. But also I just really enjoy it primarily from the perspective of the truly alien kind of planet and sorcery, uh, sword and sorcery world of Athos. The very specific universe. It's heavy influence from John Carter of Mars. Heavy influence from, you know, from the Princess of Mars but also heavy influence from Mad Max, post-apocalyptic settings. And of course, the last reason is adaptability. Now, the set pieces for a Dark Sun Total Conversion can be found in every Elder Scrolls game, but none more so than Skyrim with the Dragon Cult. And man, is the Dragon Cult cool. I mean, come on. So if you don't know, in Dark Sun, the Sorcerer Kings, largely taking after the path of Rajat, have become nor they're normal wizards evil sorcerers. Now, on Athos, the world is dying, there's no connection to a wider magical force, so magic comes from the life of the world itself. It comes from the life of the world itself. And because of that, there is a general entire path called Defiling, which is a path that literally seeks to take as much life as possible, uh, does not care for any regard for what life is harmed, and then there's another path called Preserving. And preservers are a little bit like, it's a little bit like Jedi versus Sith to some degree. But regardless, the highest form a defiler can really achieve is that of a kind of sorcerer king, which is what dragons are in Dark Sun. Dragons are not created in the same way that they are in the rest of the D&D multiverse. Athos is very unique in that regard. And dragons are done masterfully because this is a world where genuinely, they're always an evil dragon. Because to become a dragon, you have had to kill 
thousands. You have to commit wholesale slaughter of a population, and a massive one at that, to slowly over time transform and go through the various rituals to become more and more dragon-like, effectively achieving a godlike immortality on Earth. And it is so phenomenal. The Dragon Cult of Skyrim just functions so well in that. Talkative dragons, talkative dragon priests definitely plays into that. The idea of a lost tomb. I also, and this is something we'll get into as we move into geography and landscape section, but I created this also as an alternative to, I believe it's called the Verdant Green or the Last Island, but generally speaking, there's an expansion to Athos that takes place in one of the last places on the Earth with a functioning lake and water. And that's kind of my alternative is Skyrim, my Skathos, my Skyrim Athos. I really like this as a homebrew, and I really like the idea of running around in it. It's very fun. Uh, the lore I'm going with is an alternate version of the last island slash mini ocean left on Athos. This is why, as we get into the creatures section, we will be keeping all the sea creatures from one of our mods, Beasts of Tamriel, just because uh, there are equivalents on Athos and other places. Sadly, I couldn't find a sand shark, man. I really want a sand shark. Those things are cool. Anyway, barren, dried up, deadly. Uh, let's move on to that same geography and landscape section. All right, now this was the hardest and trickiest part to do. And I actually want to point out a mod that's not on the list you're seeing in front of you. And that is the bath salt cr uh, cliffs for Rorikstead. That mixed with Rorikstead wagons. And that, that is just a, a beautiful combination, which we will try to get a time lapse of before this video goes up. But in addition to that, Real Cities White Run, Real City Solitude, and Riften Thief Edition all look amazing with this. So I, I'm just going to go through each of these. So Moon Io Secunda and Moon Green One Masser. This turns Masser and Secunda into Ral and Gathay, which we go over in the Cosmology of Dark Sun in our introduction. But it also goes over this kind of... In many ways, it has a similar principle to when I was going over Kenshi. In Kenshi, you have a blue world out in the distance as you look up at the skybox. And the implication of Kenshi is that you are you, you are in the worse off planet. That there is an entire group of people also separated from a larger empire long ago, but they're better off than you. And Ral and Gathay effectively serve that same purpose because both Ral and Gathay are habitable moons with infinitely more natural resources than Athos ever had. And of course, Gathay is, I believe, <laughs> my brain, but one is green and one is yellow. I know this. <laughs> but one has green, verdant jungles. I believe it's Gathay that has green, verdant jungles and oceans. And Moon Io Secunda, the yellowish one, uh, the yellow green, the sickly yellow one, is filled with, I believe, forests and cliffs. But now moving on to three being Owl's Eclipse On Demand. Okay, so this is a power you use once. You use this power once on a character, and for the rest of that playthrough, for the rest of that character's lifespan, every time the sun rises, it will become the Blood Moon Eclipse. You don't have to press it again. It will naturally become the Blood Moon Eclipse. Moon Io Sukun. So now you have the best of both worlds, because there is a... There is a mod that changes all the weather into the dark sun, into the blood moon eclipse, if you want to, if you want it that way. But a big part of dark sun, obviously, is that the sun is dying. And as a result, things are getting hotter, and everything sucks. But everyone still wears leather because Braum, and shut up, it's cool, I, li I need it, I ne it's good, I, I need, it's good, I want it, okay. Now, with, when it comes to Owl's Eclipse On Demand, again, you just use that power once on your character, and you have Blood Moon Eclipse every day, and you have Green Moon, Yellow Moon at night. We have gone uh, partially into creating Athos already. So, moving from that into our next one, Tropical Skyrim. Tropical Skyrim is amazing. Now, it, this is obviously a heavily edited Tropical Skyrim, because you'll notice it's a lot more barren and emptied, but Tropical Skyrim, Tropical Skyrim optimized, which will get rid of more trees, then no trees plus I and I changes. It's a lot less complicated than it sounds. It gives you very exact instructions on the no trees mod page. Uh, it will very specifically tell you to copy and paste something into your Skyrim preferences. You should do so both in your uh, games folder and in your Steam Common folders, uh, wherever you can find your Skyrim prefs. Make sure to copy and paste that Terrain Manager. Uh, but what this will do is it will get rid of all the trees. 
And let's move on to LOTR, Saruman's Tower, or Thanic. Now, this is a very simple mod. It just adds a dark evil boss tower. This is for aesthetics. Wizard's Tower does the same thing. Uh, Ancient Ysgrimor Tower does the same thing. Uh, Better Emperor Tower adds a giant uh, sort of evil tower for the Empire in uh, in Solitude. Real City's White Run makes Dragon's Reach look more like a tower. Real City Solitude obviously adds just more people. Um, Cities of the North Falkreath turns the uh, sort of Pale Hall, I believe it is. Uh, it could be called the Pale Hall, but regardless, that's turned into a tower itself as well. And so we're changing the architecture here. This is a big aesthetic thing in Dark Sun. You have evil dark towers, and you have the heroes who exist within them, and boss enemies to fight within them. And the sleazy Jarl, the uh, Dre Jarl, I might say, but we'll get that get into that in the next section. Uh, the sleazy Jarl there, of course, has a Minotaur head now above his skull because Minotaurs are also a uh, very real enemy on Athos. Faction Pit Fighter is one of many mods that lets you be a gladiator. Gladiator arenas are a very common thing in uh, in Athos. I keep saying in Skyrim. In Athos, uh, a very common profession is being a gladiator. It's one of the most common and kingly professions for a slave to have. Uh, faction Pit Fighter, Faction Pit Fighter Travels add-on, Salem, which is the Riften Arena, so this is also something that I wanted to do because I like the idea of Dre owning things. We're using a mod called Argonian Jarls, um, but <laughs> we've also changed the Argonian into Gen 1 and Gen 2 Dre, so the Argonian Jarls do make sense. But I like the idea of Dre owning things and them being less, like, just slightly less evil sorcerer kings effectively that they're just merchants where money rules but one of the things here and we also have another mod that's not on this exact page here is arenas of skyrim arenas of skyrim is a phenomenal to me it's a phenomenal mod but it adds a markarth arena an arena everywhere you can imagine um salem riften arena and then riften thief edition you can guess it adds an entire tower to the <laughs> to the jarl's hall in riften then we have clear, and this is also, by the way, this plays into Dre as a whole because this is where Dre live. Dre live in larger towers. Uh, clear weather only. So this is a world where even though you're on the last island, it's still Athos. It's still a dying planet. We want to make it very clear that life is on the way out, not on the way in. So clear weather only. So you're not getting rain. You might get some clouds overhead, but you're never going to get rain. You're never going to get any of that fun, good time storm weather or snowy weather. You're never going to get that. And then you're going to get Remove Harvestable Plants. So what Remove Harvestable Plants will do is it will remove harvestable plants because everyone's going to die. <laughs> um, then we also have basically just a bunch of stuff to increase the aesthetics of suffering. And remember, with Tropical Skyrim, it replaces a lot of the snow textures with sand. And so when you see Ancient and Morn ruins, or Ancient and Morn remains here, don't worry, not only are giants a huge part of Athos, and we'll actually get into an entire section on giants near the end of the video, but in addition to that, like the corpses of giants it, it, with sand on them and dust on them, is it's a very good thing. Definitely a shout-out to Mihail, one of the best mod authors on Skyrim, no matter how much I'll complain about him, because he keeps taking down his Thrykreen mod and put it back up again. But we have the Thrykreen mod, so don't you worry about it. Uh, flies around corpses, bloody mammoth uh, carcasses, all to add that. Whale bones on the coast, snow whale bones, all of that. Now, once you have everything installed here, it's important that you do. If you're going to use Dine Dulaud, and I would recommend using Dine Dulaud, I will leave a link to Gamer Poets and their guide to it after I'm done recording this section. I'll put that in the source list. But generally speaking, Dine Dulaud is something that will help you manage distant terrain. It's a very simple process that generates two files that both act as mods, and that lets you control your distant terrain. It's very good very powerful. The reason you want to do that at the end of this, before you add any other mods, is that there are mods in the later list that if you try to install Dine Dulaud after you install those mods, chiefly Destructible Skyrim, a lot of the cool stuff that turns this into fantasy GTA, you, 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 don't, you, you don't do that. Okay? So you don't, you don't, you just do that now, 
Take care of it now so you don't have to deal with the game-breaking bugs later. And something you'll also notice on screen, do not use any ENBs or reshades. One of the things I did with mod testing in the version 1 of this a year ago, reshades will result in the shader bug where you get ghost images on screen, making it impossible for you to see anything and making the game virtually unplayable. So do not use a reshade. And then do not use any ENBs because this already comes with a bloom effect. Not many ENBs are really compatible. You're going to end up with pitch black nights that you genuinely can't see anything anything in and that's not the same thing as darker nights or realistically darker nights pitch black nights that you can't see anything in and then you're also going to possibly go blind if you try to use extra bloom effects i i had that happen to me shiny bright lights where i like i basically stared directly at the dark sun for an hour <laughs> and that was not wise all right i believe that is the landscape changes section so let's move on to something else. All right, for starters, like I said before, and this is one of the elements of the conversion that really I, I didn't hit on enough in the previous sections, and that is that if the makeup for it did not already exist, that is to say that if everything in Skyrim would not also work in Athos, I wouldn't even bother trying to do this. Because there is a misconception when you mod a game, but especially when modding Skyrim, there is an idea that you can make it a different game with a different objective and goal. But the truth is, it's still Skyrim. Remember, the Jar Jarl Bolgriff is still waiting for you to deal with the Dragonstone. You are still eventually going to go to Bleak Falls Barrow, yada, yada, yada. The important thing is having that in a different setting with different lore that's actually fun and very, very cool. Uh, not that Elder Scrolls itself isn't cool psychedelic fantasy, but I prefer Athos. So, the humans are covered by the vanilla races. Moles, which are half-dwarves, who are just muscular, bald humans, are covered by the uh, vanilla races. Elves are covered by the vanilla races, because many elves in Athos are mutants and look exactly like the Bosmer, Dunmer, and Altmer. Half-elves are generally covered because we're using race menu, and as a result of using race menu, we can both get the half-giant deformities, which we'll get to a little later, but also we can do the um, generally thing where we give like the dark elf a human skin tone, so you can be a half elf if you desire. Uh, Generation 1 Dre are covered by vanilla races because the vanilla Argonians are implemented the same way the barbaric Gen 1 Dre would be. Uh, Dregoth, the fellow you see in the lower right hand corner there, uh, was a crazed racial supremacist who tried to craft a master race called the Dragonborn. That's how Dragonborn exist. Uh, they are called Dre, but that is how Dragonborn exist in Athos. Generation 1 were mutant freaks who were mess-ups, and they were cast out, and many of them are barbarians, raiders, and traitors, and of course that is definitely represented by them working odd jobs at the uh, dockyards in Windhelm. And then of course the last race covered by the uh, uh, by the vanilla races, but also sadly one that I did not cover in our All Races and Dark Suns, who I'll explain them, Tarek. Uh, the Tarek, the not-orcs of Dark Sun, who are drawn and look and act in Brahms' art exactly like the orcs of Skyrim. So again, so all of these are covered. All of these are covered in, in the vanilla. And again, if the elements weren't there, it's like we were saying before, if the elements weren't there, I wouldn't bother. So going into the race mods we are using. Half-Giant Race. So Half-Giant Race is literally the only truly dark sun mod no I'm a bit. is the only truly dark sun mod that I could find on Nexus that was genuinely inspired by Dark Sun. So half race giant menu and you will literally get a lore friendly description of what the half giants are. And that's amazing. Uh, that's that's wonderful. Uh, next up, Thrycreen by Mihail. This, this will add enemy Thrycreen and Humanoid Chorus throughout the general part of Blackreach. Blackreach in the sort of underground subterranean area, which has not necessarily been changed because it is absolutely lore-friendly. Uh, six would be the Humanoid race, cra uh, <laughs> race Crap. Humanoid Race Pack, Ash Hopper, and Humanoid Chorus. So Ash Hopper and Humanoid Chorus are going to function as your Thrycreen and Torcreen races. Uh, generally speaking, you will notice that the uh, the Humanoid Chorus looks much like the Jo'oz, and the uh, Humanoid Ash Hopper looks a lot like the Jo'ol. Uh, so the Thrycreen and Torcreen uh, sub-races, respectively. Uh, Beastly Beastmen, which is one half of our Argonians to Dre overhaul. 
uh, which gives them the same look they more or less would have had in Morrowind if Morrowind's art style was updated, so they already look more bestial, but then changing them from lizard to dragons, we have the Dracus Argonian mods. And of course, the Dracus Argonian mod pairs very well with Argonian Jarls, because now we have these finely dressed, sleazy, scummy, dragonborn, skinny, evil, dre motherfucker Jarls who just genuinely hate you and your family and want to sell you for a penny. Anyway, we also want to add in halflings and dwarves. Now, the thing about halflings and dwarves... Well, for right now, the thing about halflings... Halflings are the only creatures to live in a forest area. And I will admit, to some degree, the Shire... But man, does it work so well. It functions so well as like a psychedelic DLC to Scathus, basically. And the thing about the Shire is that the Shire is... Even though the halflings aren't cannibals, obviously, the Shire is such a good break from Scathis, and it adds the halflings and the dwarves as races. And even though the dwarves aren't hairless, you can obviously play a hairless dwarf. You can choose those hairless options. Now, this next mod is... And you probably know what the Shire is, just to be clear. It's, it's a Lord of the Rings mod for Skyrim that's very old, and many people know about it. But it really does function as both a good DLC and a good race mod. Now, your Vasker companions are dwarves. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a testament to why 2011 Skyrim is the king of modding, and why Anniversary Edition can, frankly, do things that I don't know if I can say on YouTube. So that's, frankly, <laughs> what it is. Uh, your Vasker companions are dwarves is a mod you will have to manually install by doing manual download on Nexus, and then adding it via your favorite mod manager. It's a very simple, quick setup, make sure all the plugins are active, and everyone but Codlack White Mane will be a dwarf in the Companions, and it will be so great and so wonderful, because they're warriors, they're already anti-dwarves, um, and you get one, like, it, it works so well for Athos, because everyone's like a mutant to some degree, and you get like that, that one dude, and I actually, I think his name is, it's either Athos or Arthas, but the Dark Elf in the Companions, <laughs> it was one of my first Companions when I played Skyrim for the first time, and he is also a dwarf, and they're all tiny, And then, but cod like white man. And it's like they're all like tiny space marines because they're all wearing dwarven armor too. And so they're all like tiny space marines. They're all like tiny space marines, and cod like white mane is their primarch. And it's so adorable, and I love it. Uh, did I cover everything in this list? Um, yeah, yes, I did. I believe I did. Yes, okay, so race menu, we covered that. Race menu is basically giant deformities, um, half giants are known for their horrid deformities in Dark Sun. They're known for being very, very ugly, but also highly optimistic. You may have seen our Dark Sun shorts, or you may have watched our long form Dark Sun videos and heard me talk about that before. But they are also known for their deformities, and so we got to make uh, characters like you may have seen already on screen with my loving playthrough of Chongo Chongo. Uh, Chongo Chongo is the self appointed protector of Rorikstead, uh, and he will destroy all those who harm you. And the only thing he can say is Chongo Chongo. He is a surprisingly accurate acrobatic a half giant who likes to do back lifts and go chungo 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 and it, it's like oh, i'm sorry sir can i can i bother you for like do you need like food or say chungo chungo it's like oh yeah we're gonna mug you chungo chungo and then he kills them and like rips them apart and we'll get to those mods too anyway chungo chungo so obviously you can see on screen for yourself the 33 weapons and armor and wardrobe mods we've used in this mod list. I'm not going to go over every single one, but there are some key ones, including the best mod you should be using for Skyrim 2011. This mod makes the purchase of Skyrim 2011 worth it alone, and that is, of course, the Any Weapon mod by Titty Kitty. The Any Weapon mod features in every mod list I have ever made in my entire life, even when... It, and this, by the way, this is something unique about this mod list. I just want to briefly mention, there are there isn't any perk overhaul. I don't have a perk overhaul in, installed. This is literally just about playing Scathis. There's we don't have to change the the perks at all. But anyway, the any weapon mod will often conflict if you use like Ordinator because if you want to play a Necromancer, there's that Bone Collector perk. And what the any weapon mod does is it takes all the miscellaneous items that you would find in vanilla Skyrim and converts them into weapons. You can beat people to death with cast iron pots. You can beat people to death with brooms. You can beat people to death with rakes. You can beat people to death with a bucket. I've beaten a man to death with a, tro a troll skull and a, and a normal skull and dual wielding troll skull and normal skull with a hairless dwarf. And I really love this mod setup man. 
Okay. So any weapon mod worth the purchase alone, but any weapon mod is great. I love the any weapon mod by Teddy Yeti. Uh, Bone Mold and Chitin Weapons Dragonborn DLC is a part of Skyrim. These two mods work really great, uh, obviously, together because they have great synergy. And that is that you can find smithing ingredients and you can buy smithing ingredients from normal blacksmiths to craft Bone Mold and Chitin, which in the base Skyrim are, of course, totally useless because they have lower stats. They, you get them too late in the game, but here you will get them earlier in the game and that's pretty much it honed metal if you just want to be an adventurer and use blacksmiths like well you know blacksmiths well you can do that now enchanters and blacksmiths are now enchanters and blacksmiths they will actually serve that purpose and you will be able to they will be tempering your weapons they will be doing what they can for you honed metal is one of those amazing mods that sadly broke with the anniversary edition update so again another reason to use 2011 the Dragon Knight, Dragon Hide uh, armors are wonderful. Obviously, anything that adds more bone armor, just like we have up here, obsidian weapons and armor, stone weapons, ivory weapons, horker bone weapons. Uh, the ivory weapons mod, just a brief note, uh, I will link our Steam package, which I've edited. I've linked the, the Steam small amount of mods. That's where you're going to get green, uh, green 1, Masser, and Io Secunda. That is also where they are. Um, Highlander Guard Armor and Friendly Guard Helms. Uh, now, this was me trying to get the art for the Templars from Braum translated into the Guards in Skyrim, and I think we did a good job of it. Friendly Guard Helms literally gives them just that unique, you know, you get that face, but you still have the pointed hat, you still have that sweet, cool German uh, stabby up point. And then you have the Highlander Guard armor, which gives them that kind of cool robed look at the bottom, which is very nice. OBIS and OBIS Redone are another example. One of the reasons we didn't change the Dark Brotherhood armor is that the Dark Brotherhood armor makes very little sense in Skyrim, but makes great sense in Athos. It's very similar to one of my favorite overhauls for Fallout New Vegas. Uh, in Fallout New Vegas, there's a mod author named uh, Dark Wolf 5. And Dark Wolf 5 turns the uh, Legion and the... And, no, actually, he turned Caesar's Legion into the Blood Pact and World Eaters of Corn. Now, you see, as a bunch of Romaboos trying to recreate Rome, their behavior makes no sense. But as crazy, actually crazy people influenced by a demon god, a dark god, a chaos god, that makes sense. But I digress. OBIS uh, adds a lot of cool remixed dark armors that look like that mixture of leather, obsidian, bone... Um, you have a Troll Skull Helmet variant, just a lot of cool armors that you can find in the world and that you can use and wear, as well as wardrobes, so just a great mix of light, heavy armor that you can use and wear as a reward for going out and fighting bandits. Makes bandits more interesting, you get the annoying message, bandits seem more common now a lot, but other than that, you're going to be <laughs> you're gonna be riding, riding high on Easy Street when it comes to interest in bandits. Um... That's very fun. So, Tropical Skyrim, less armor. So, this is another big part of Sky, uh, big part of Dark Sun, that I have always loved, and that's that they don't use as much armor. Now, again, this doesn't explain the leather, but we don't care about that because we like the artwork of Brom and we like what they're going for with the aesthetics. Tropical Skyrim, less armor, literally just makes them use more shields. It goes great, by the way. I don't know if we have bigger shields listed here, but I am using bigger shields. But Tropical Skyrim, less armor, more shields makes NPCs less likely to use heavy armor and more likely to use light armor with shields. Spartan Empire mod. Okay, so the Spartan Empire mod is another unique 2011 Skyrim find, but it fully converts the entirety of the Imperial faction in solitude into the Spartan Empire, which is amazing. And you get the, uh, you know, on, on one hand, it's a little bit young men. Come and stay at the show, I said, young men. Come and fight for Tully. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm bad at this. But it's, it, look, it's fun. It's stupid. And then you have Winterhold Robes, which replaces the faction of the... And this is another Steam Workshop one. Uh, again, Steam Collection link below. That's going to go with all the rest of these mods that you're going to get from Nexus. But uh, Winterhold Robes, it just basically adds Winterhold variants and colored tropical. Very tropical and looks very good with the setting. Uh, variants of the Dark Brotherhood robes to the various, uh, uh, what would be in our universe, preservers at the College of Winterhold, which is very cool. Real weapons replacers. Okay, so real weapons replacers, and it's important to understand the reasoning behind this, 
is that while real weapons replacers isn't perfect, in the sense that you are in an area of Athos that likely is one of the few areas where metal can still be crafted and used, at the same time, real weapons replacers puts more wood, more of a wood emphasis on each weapon. You can see that more of a percentage of the item, especially visible in the axes, is taken up by wood rather than the metal portion. And so just that idea that it is rarer and the idea that these people are using these weapons and crafting these weapons with what they have, it's sparing, and to save sort of money, save money on what is increasingly a rare equipment, which is metal in general, what they are doing is they are using less metal. The Troll Hunter set, also by Hoth Trooper 44, which literally just gives you armor you can craft from killing trolls, which, by the way, we have converted into Bragzits. Uh, I will get into what a Bragzit is when we get into the monster section. Very fun. Morrowind Armor Compilation. This will give you an ex... Uh, <laughs> This will give you a great ability to craft as much uh, chitin weapons, as much mud crab weapons, boiled chitin weapons, just everything you could imagine from that that would fit amazing in Athos. That obviously Morrowind took a lot from Athos, especially the way that Dunmer work. But yeah, no Morrowind, uh, all the chitin armor, all the bone mold armor, Conan armory. Uh, very much a sword and sorcery themed world. You can It's a very optional mod. You don't have to install it. It's still cool. Uh, that plus the Temple of Set, Armory, Conan, 1982. And that's, uh, that was also pretty cool because it replaces Mirak with Thulsa Doom. And I really like that. Point being, let's move on. Daedric Armor by Fourth Unknown. It's a replacer for both the Daedric blades and armor and weapons. Uh, and what that will do is make them more look like they are made out of dark obsidian than they are made out of, well, whatever Daedric weapons are made out of. In truth, the Daedric weapons and armor aren't exactly all that lore-breaking, but this still adds a unique spin on them that feels very good. As with any Skyrim mod list, there's a lot of frivolous, I think it looks cool, but it does look cool, and it's really cool. Craftable Ancient Falmer Armor, which basically adds a nice set of bone armor in the form of the Ancient Falmer Armor, which you can find in the Dawn Guard oblivion area better vampire npcs and better vampire weapons along with brene vampire armaments vampire weapon replacers and what that will do is it will add sort of crystal weapons to the world especially the blood glass weapons in the form of the vampires now one fun thing about vampires as they fit into the world of Athos, and we'll get into this with how we've changed vampires and werewolves aesthetically is that they really are just another group of necromancer defilers in this world and their plot to destroy the sun it turns them into a cool nihilistic death cult which i really like eso nord barbarian armor which i got rid of almost immediately but it definitely looks cool for the setting argonian mercenary armor and cultural diversity cultural diversity and dunmer of skyrim working together what that will do is it will add a bunch of the dunmer outfits it will add a bunch of the chitin and bone mold armor around the world of skyrim in various different dunmer npcs very cool there very lore appropriate for Athos. Narrative Loot Forsworn Skull Helmets. This is a great replacer for a mod that stopped working for some reason, which was Forsworn Equipment Flexibility Project. But Narrative Loot Forsworn Skull Helmets literally adds cool bone armor and skull helmets to the various groups uh, of Forsworn around the world. That is really all they need to fit in more. If you want, you can pair this with the retexture, but all that will do is turn the Forsworn armor green. I prefer them in their natural uh, vanilla because that to me works way better with the setting we're currently using and that sort of color tone also works really well Ashlander camp of New Zanib. this is sort of an unofficial small village that is added to the marshland of Skyrim and it's just this nice small Ashlander camp of various different NPCs you can get sold again this is another way to get those cool alien looking weapons you can buy membrane swords and membrane weapons from them very cool stuff I would say and fits very very well in both the lore of Athos but also is a great mod if you're just looking for something to spice up that part of the Skyrim map and you play vanilla anyway moving on to the next section However, if you want to represent any of these races on your tabletop rather than a video game world, I would recommend today's sponsor, Ronin Craft. Ronin Craft is an independent 3D model printing service. With a specialty in both fantasy and sci-fi, it's the perfect choice for all your Athasian needs. Because with Ronin Craft, you'll get quality that surpasses any master. Okay, when it comes to magic on Athos, we have four elements we really, really need to get down. 
illiteracy, psionicism, preserving, and defiling. We already explained what those are at the beginning, but not psionics or illiteracy. Literacy is the inability to read or write. This is usually enforced in the Tablelands, the usual setting of Dark Sun, but would, I guess, be considered less common outside of there. So what we want is one where literacy is not common. The majority population is very illiterate. And what plays into that is, of course, remove spell tomes for loot and vendors, because, of course, magic is vampiric in this universe. You wouldn't just be selling it. More expensive spell tomes, magic is very dangerous, thus ultimately goes up in value like a nuclear warhead. Then we have spell research and the apocalypse extension for it. Spell research allows you to research, control, and develop your own spells. If you want to be a wizard or a mage, you're going to have to learn to read and write first, and that is what spell research is all about. We've taken away your normal ability to learn magic, and now you're going to learn it the way that someone who, if they were illiterate, if they didn't have anything, if they were just starting off, and they had to begin to research and grow and develop as a person, would have to learn it first. That, to me, is just phenomenal. Now, moving on, we have the psionics. Now, psionics are already kind of represented in Skyrim through the powers. Uh, and how we're going to increase that is we're actually going to be using a few mods, two mods really, the Path of the Anti-Mage, which is another very old classic mod for Skyrim, in which you will go, uh, go into a special area where you will learn special psionic powers and abilities that will allow you to call forth the power of, say, a uh, sort of magic eater. Uh, a person who is now developing, and how psionics work on Athos is that everything is dying and everything is evolving to live in this hellish world. One of the sort of side effects of that is that everyone is psychic now. Everyone's a Jedi, kind of. And some people are mega super ultra Jedi. Those those are called Velici, but we, we don't have Velici yet. Point being, uh, Path of the Anti-Mage. The Path of the Anti-Mage mod will give you special psionic blades and basically the skills of a magic hunter. As a psionicist, you are using powers that are non-offensive to nature to go and take out people who are destroying the very planet you live on. Spells as lesser powers will also help with this. Uh, basically what this will do, along with the no power cooldown mod that we're using, is that spells as lesser powers will give you a series of different classic vanilla Skyrim spells that you can learn as powers from vendors. Don't worry, uh, remove spell tomes does not affect that, and the reason it does not affect that is that, one, they're only sold at Winterhold, and two, the remove uh, spells mods that we're using only work with specific modules. So the only thing that's actually going to remove is the Apocalypse and Vanilla spells, but it still makes them far more uh, rare. And of course, more expensive spell tomes affects everything. So no matter what mod, you're still going to have to pay an arm and a leg and then several other people's arms and legs to go get it. But spells is lesser powers, and that extends to Berserker Rage, lesser power, uh, and Unlimited Night Eye, lesser power, so that turns both of those. If you want to play a Tarek, an Orc, you can just be an overpowered badass mess, but activating Berserker Rage every three seconds and going full warrior mode. Uh, Unlimited Night Eye, lesser power, which just is kind of a modification that anyone would make. Predator Vision by Gopher, so if you are someone playing a Khajiit, a Vampire, or a Werewolf, um, you can easily get a good understanding of where humans are. It works well for what we've turned them into, dragon men, liches, and cat people. So remove lesser power cooldown, which we already went over. Uh, Fenderix Energy Consumption. Now, this is a very cool mod by the same guy who did Fenderix Elements, which we're not using for other reasons, but Fenderix Energy Consumption is pretty great, and we're actually using it with Elemental Magic Redux, and the reason we're using Elemental Magic Redux is that there isn't a perk that comes with it, so it's literally just the spell tomes out in the world, but Fenderix Energy Consumption is pretty great. It lets you assign a hotkey that lets you turn your health into Magicka, and it's pretty great because that is ultimately what would happen to you if you were Preserver or Defiler and you didn't have a source of life to draw on. You would inevitably have to use your own blood, so trying to turn it into the magic system, if you're using magics instead of psionics, instead of powers, 
then yeah, no, the Fenderix energy consumption would work out really well for you. You can sacrifice your blood and your health to cast spells if you so desire. Now, Undeath and Undeath Immersive Lichdom, obviously that is for the Necromancers in the room. You know this mod likely if you've played Skyrim. It is a classic mod that activates around level 30. You will get a letter to go to a place that is like, we're going to investigate a secret lich cult, and ultimately you will get the ability to turn into a lich if you choose the dark side of that cult. Um, and of course, Undeath Immersive Lichdom is just an expansion for that that makes being a lich even more powerful, badass, and cool. Now we have Blood Magic Spell to Pack and Triumvirate Mage Archetypes. So there are a couple of forces in... Uh, Blood Magic Spell Pack is to a very large degree self-explanatory. It just adds Blood Magic and sometimes Blood Magic costs health, which is very theme appropriate, especially if you want to play a Defiler or a Preserver. Now Triumvirate Mage Archetypes adds one very important thing. Obviously most of these archetypes are very complementary for the Preserver or... Uh, for the Preserver or Defiler playstyle, but one of them is very important in relation to the lore when it comes to an element of the universe called the Black. The Black is like the Grey. The Grey separates humanity from the gods, but not from the Nine Hells, which is really, really cool, because it literally just cuts you off from all the good stuff, which is a big part of the reason why there is vampiric nature to magic. It's all, You're also cut off from any kind of weave or power source outside of the self that would allow for magic, and that's why you have to use life force energy of the world around you. But the black is where shadow magic comes from. And shadow magic is actively sold by unique vendors, uh, not added by Triumvirate, but in fact using different NPCs in the world that you wouldn't really talk to otherwise, I think, uh, that would give you unique spells. So you can choose to be a warlock, a druid, uh, but also very coolly and very importantly, uh, a, a shadow mage, which is definitely something that I am very, uh, very into. Okay, let's move on to our animation and combat and gore and destruction mods. One of easily the biggest aesthetic differences between Elder Scrolls and Athos is that in Athos, people do backflips, people do somersaults, everybody knows some type of makeshift back alley martial art, and everybody is some type of psychic allowing for some type of really cool move. And our animation and gore mods are going to reflect that. Backflip. This is literally just a backflip animation that will let you do a backflip like you are Luke Skywalker in the original trilogy. No combat sneak animation, which will basically just turn you into kind of a Spider-Man-like ninja figure uh, when normally resting and sneaking. Injury animations with Wildcat and Wildcat injury animations, which are really great because what they're going to do is they're going to indicate when you have a wound by making you hold yourself bloody like it's a dramatic scene before you do some cool flippy flip and kill a man. Dynamic animation replacer is necessary for a lot of these mods. It's like a, it's a requirement. NPC animation remix will make the world around you feel more alive, along with several other mods we'll get to later. But what that will do is it will definitely make the world feel more alive. People will talk to each other more, and you will notice random events, along with, I believe, its world encounters. Bigger shields we already went over. Character behaviors enhanced is a necessary one. Character behaviors enhanced is available for both versions of Skyrim, and I really recommend you use it no matter what. Character behaviors enhanced literally just lets you jump and hit. Um, it's a lot like better jumping. Better jumping, if you're using 2011, just lets you jump while sprinting, which is a very cool and important thing. It really changes how you, you play the game. Uh, characters behaviors, uh, character behaviors enhanced lets you hit things underwater. It lets it enables underwater combat. It enables uh, mid-air combat, so you can maybe charge up an attack. That's another thing. The way it changes it, it lets you charge up power attacks. Lets you have power attacks wait, and then like you can start a power attack when you're mid-air, and then land. And as soon as you land. Phew, and that, that just nothing feels better with the gore mods we have installed. So now we come to the part of the list that really does turn this into Fantasy New Vegas or Fantasy GTA, at least in terms of gore. And that is, in addition to two mods you're not seeing on the screen, which I should have added, but Deadly Mutilation and also Frozen Electrocution Combustion is working in tandem with Maximum Skeletons, Maximum Carnage, and Maximum Destruction. And what all of these together do is add horrifying, nightmarish gore effects to all your melee and and magic attacks, allowing fire to truly burn someone to a burning corpse and humiliate and torture their corpse. Uh, you, When you're using ice magic, you can freeze someone to the point where they become frozen solid, then hit them and they will explode. You can also, with Maximum Carnage and Deadly Mutilation, have gore go everywhere and beat someone literally into a bloody mush where they become a gore 
pile, exploding into nothingness as their corp rot, corpse rots away. Then in addition to that, we have two simple mods, Dismember Mud Crabs and Dismember Chorus. And this is also enabled by uh, Maximum Carnage, but it seems to work pretty well with Dismember Mud Crabs and Dismember Chorus. Uh, it makes them break apart just like the Ash Hopper does when you defeat that. Uh, fire and Ice Overhaul allows fire and electrocutions, uh, electrocution and fire magic to actually catch things on fire, and you can start wildfires. I've entertained a few of my friends in Discord. Uh, one of my friends is a, another YouTuber named Eradication, and uh, I, was, I remember being... Uh, using this mod with uh, the the sort of list I'm using here, the mini list I'm using here when I was making my Star Wars Skyrim overhaul, and I was just using like Goblin Grand Theft Auto in that world, and I was just burning everything down and exploding. It's just it's just a wonderful good time. You need to, you need to see people need to be destroyed. People need to be destroyed. You need to set people's houses on fire in Skyrim. You need to do that in Skyrim. It's really cool. Um. It's it's just phenomenal being able to dynamically interact with the environment like that. In all seriousness, it's very awesome. And of course, the ice element of it is that ice spells, other than frostbite, uh, other than the very basic frost uh, spell, will leave behind an icicle sort of pattern that you can use to jump on different things. It's a bit harder to work than the fire element, and that's really what you're there for, the fire element. Destructible Skyrim, Destructible Bottles, and Destructible Display Cases all lets you destroy barrels. This lets you destroy... Uh, bottles, display cases, it lets you destroy shelves and certain tables. It lets you destroy certain things and makes the world generally more destructible, similar to a Dark Souls game. And I really, really enjoy that. Or a Zelda game. It's just very fun. I just, I just, it's very fun to do that. It's very fun to break stuff. It also adds a crime mechanic, Destructible Skyrim, where if you break a, a barrel in uh, in town, you will be tr like get, <laughs> given a $100 bounty for it and you'll have to pay for it. So that's very cool. Uh, martial Arts, this adds new unarmed combat animations. Now, as we said, we're in the Dark Sun setting, we're in Athos, and you are going to be doing sidekicks and flying sidekicks for a power attack, and you will be doing sort of kickboxing animations, which are pretty cool. One-handed mid-stance, which is just a more fantasy style or more empowered stance for the setting we're using, which is really cool. Um, Warden stance, which is very uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, hello there, uh, sort of stance for two-handed weapons, which is very nice. For one-handers, the way you're going to be moving is with Akaviri Martial Arts, the one-handed version. Make sure to choose the one-handed version in that mod page. Um, but you will basically be moving like a katana or a samurai with any mace or axe or sword that you use. Art of the Wolf School will be your two-handed animations, and obviously these are Witcher Parowet-inspired uh, two-handed animations, which work really well, of course, with that Warden stance. Executioner Battle Axe Stance. Uh, the Warhammer and Battle Axe animations have stayed vanilla for the most part, but you do have the change of the Executioner Battle Axe Stance, which is basically whenever you stand still with a Battle Axe, uh, you will find yourself in a position of looking like a true Imperial Guard, which looks very cool, but I, I do feel the vanilla animations for those two heavier weapons uh, just make more sense. Then when we have the Phalanx Stance, the Phalanx Stance is for shield and sword, and what that will do is replace your bash animation uh, with a sort of light stab from whatever other offhand weapon you have, or a punch if you have no other offhand weapon. Now, Goetia animations. These four animations affect our magic. Alternative staff movement and the staff animation mods are pretty cool. Uh, what this does is basically, if you put the caps lock on, you know, and you're walking through Skyrim, what you'll do now if you're holding a staff is you will have that sort of nice walking stick animation, which is really great if you're a creepy evil sorcerer. I was messing around with a dragon character on here and really enjoyed the aesthetic feel of like summoning zombies and just dun 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 it's very very fun sneak magic uh which is an alternative for the magic system and again magic spell casting and sneak magic all this does is get rid of the more effeminate flimsy uh ninny animations when it comes to magic casting you will actually run and jog and look very very cool when casting magic and fighting and all these work really well together that is all for the animation mods. Let's move on.
So we already talked about how we're using Talkative Dragons and Talkative Dragon Priests, but in addition to that, let's talk about Spherical Soul Gems just very briefly, because as a part of the Dragon Transformation Ritual, uh, you will effectively have to create Soul Gems within your body, which are spheres comprised of the energy taken from living beings. And that is what we are doing with Spherical Soul Gems. We are making them look a little more like that. Insanity's Dwemer Coin replaces the gold with a ceramic-looking coin, which is what they use for money in Dark Sun, which is very cool. The Dragon Man Werewolf Replacer, because the companions are, again, we have pretty much a vanilla werewolf setup. Uh, we just have the Dragon Man Werewolf because, generally speaking, with the companion still being the only way you can become a werewolf, by joining them, you're dealing with effectively people who tried to ascend to Dragonhood like a lot of people do. But in this case, they were dwarves. And yeah, here's the thing about being a dwarf. You're not going to be compatible with magic, regardless of what setting you're in. And that's true for the Athasian dwarves as well. The only difference, of course, is that they're usually hairless. Now, when it comes to that, we assume the natural result of people incompatible with magic trying to do a magic thing, whether it's evil or not, is that it's going to mess up and turn them into savage monsters, and that is exactly what the Dragon Man is. The Werewolf is now a very unique Dragon Man, and I did test the Werewolf Roar. It does summon extra Dragon Men instead of summoning extra Werewolves. Very cool. The Lich Vampire Lord Replacer, again, is just an aesthetic change to the Vampire Lord, but it makes a world of difference. This is not a world with traditional vampires and werewolves in its lore, and that's a very cool thing. So, this is just another lich excuse so you can do you basically have two methods of lichdom if you really want to be a dregoth if you want to be a dre who goes down the path of lichdom you can absolutely do that i know that's not what dregoth is but I, i'm saying that if you want to play something similar to that if you want to be mr sorcerer king lichman you can absolutely do that. You can do it twofold, in fact, and have two lich forms. One that's your vanilla vampire lord, and the other that is the immersive lichdom. Very cool. Next with Zombie Draugr AV. This is, again, a very simple mod. I would say, personally, that it makes the Draugr look and sound more like traditional zombies. It, it's what the mod page says as well, but it also reminds me a lot of the ghouls from Fallout. And that is what they are now. They're very green, traditional zombies summoned by a Sorcerer King that would have them as minions, and I really like that. Then we also have bigger dragons and chromatic dragons together. Uh, what that does is it, give dragon, it gives dragons more health while also boosting their skeleton, and chromatic dragons is a way of altering the way dragons function, giving them a classic D&D look that goes really great with a special mod that you have to install by going to get it from the Skyrim Special Edition Nexus, manually download it, and then look through the files and add them to meshes within the Skyrim data folder. And the vanilla dragons, the dragons not part of the Dragonborn DLC, will have the arms. So dragons with arms is something that's really, really cool. So dragons with arms. But then in addition to that, we have from Nexus, unique dragon priests mask, uh, masks, animated dragon wings, um, which goes with more draconic aspect. This is actually to, if you want to play an Evangion, more Draconic Aspect, choose the gold option when you're downloading it, uh, and then also animated dragon wings are necessary for that mod to work, so that's why we have it in there. But more Draconic Aspect and go with the yellow, and you can become something akin to an Evangion, which is the good guy equivalent of the dragon transformation. It allows you to become a preserver and a hero, uh, but it effectively is something that's like an angel, but not an angel, very similar in a way to... Uh, the feel that Adra have in Elder Scrolls. No shout cooldown. Again, that's more an optional thing because I realize that you can still say shouts are a very specific thing to this part of the world, but you can also say that it's an element of psionics, and that definitely helps turn uh, between shouts and minor powers. That effectively turns that into a kind of play style in its own right rather than just being something on the side, which is really fun. Skyrim Unbound Reborn is our alternative start mod of choice, which lets us manage all of our mods before we even start the game, which is a very great thing. And it also is, I would say, the only mod that lets you choose to be a Dragonborn or not. Now remember, it's Athos. You having the psionic ability to absorb dragon souls would not be an uncommon thing, because you were just born with a psionic ability to absorb souls, is really what it is. And that's what you have, and that's what you're seeing when you become the Dragonborn. But, if you feel like you don't want to play the Dragonborn, 
Skyrim Unbound Reborn has an option for that where you can literally just say, not the Dragonborn, and the main quest will be cut off to you, and you will be prevented from exploring it, and you will move outward into the world. Alternatively, you can be uh, no Dragonborn with automatic shouts, which is the option I recommend, in which a bunch of people keep saying you're the Dragonborn, but in reality you're just learning psionic abilities, which is what the shouts become. Then you have Wraiths by Fourth Unknown. This is easily one of the most iconic undead in Athos due to the Grey. This is kind of what you become. You become a creature of the Grey. You become a Wraith, something that can occasionally manifest but is doomed to a tortured existence in the afterlife. This is added on by Ghosts and Souls by Mihail. And that is our undead, our Sorcerer Kings, and our False Dragons. We already went over Talkative Dragons and Talkative Dragon Priests because they're able to talk. Uh, we also have Talkative Hag Ravens down the line, which is the, the closest thing to Arakakra we're really going to get, but we don't really know, actually. Uh, let me review roguelike encounters, because that, man, that's going to be cool. You're going to like roguelike encounters. So, if you're not familiar, Crudlu are basically reptilian-scaled ostriches that are used primarily as the mounts in Dark Sun, with a secondary being Kanks, or giant beetles. So, Tropical Zebra Horse Replacer plus three Guar mods are sort of trying to make up for the lack of, you know, available bug and or scaled ostrich mounts. But generally speaking, with our three Guars mod, uh, one by Fourth Unknown, one by G77, and one by Mihail, we have our bases covered in terms of getting those sweet, sweet Guar mounts, which you can find in Whiterun through Farangar. You can find in... Uh, to do Solstheim with the Fourth Unknown mount, and you can find in the marshes area of the Skyrim map for Mihel's mods. So we do have a substitute for the Crudlu, and actually mods by M150 uh, give us through the Ashhopper followers, Chorus Scorpion followers, and the other, uh, I believe it's the Ashhopper or the Silt Strider followers. Uh, through those, not, not the followers themselves, but through the mounts that come associated with them, we have various different forms of bug mounts, including a giant spider mount, which can be found a near, I want to say, near the Pale Imperial Camp. You can find it near, near the Pale Imperial Camp. You'll have to steal it at first, but then it kind of becomes yours. Now... Uh, we also have Nixie the Nixhound, Vigilance the Durzog, which changes Vigilance the Dog, the purchasable dog in Markarth, into a Durzog, which is a scaled dog, of course. Uh, Nixie the Nixhound is a unique companion. Chorus Companion Steven uh, is a Chorus Companion that can be found in Whiterun, and you can use him if you so desire. Of course, all our companion mods are optional for this. Feel free to ignore this if you so desire. Uh, insect Arms are actually a weapon mod, but they're very lore-friendly to Dark Sun, and I added them in here simply because it adds more to spiders, because you can craft them using uh, Frostbite Venom, and they are effectively axes and makeshift weapons that are very Dark Sun-like. Tame the Beasts of Skyrim too. so we have a bunch of, of mods, as we're going to get to in the next section, that add a huge heap of monsters and things that you can go fight and deal with, and it's, it's very lore-friendly and very good. And with Tame the Beasts of Skyrim, you will literally be able to control them as your own. That's very cool. Wayward Warrior Skeep is an anorexic minotaur, which I really, really like. In this anorexic minotaur, Crackhead is Chongo Chongo's only friend. That is Chongo Chongo Cannon. If you've seen our Chongo Chongo footage, you might have seen Skeep already. Uh, the Barbus remake, Spectral, so there is a Spectral Hound Replacer mod, and you can choose to either replace Vigilance or Barbus, Barbus from the Clavicus Vile Daedric Prince quest, which in our lore, of course, the Daedric Princes are simply part of the universe, they're effectively elementals, much like they would be in Dark Sun, that's how elementals are treated, but the same way that Daedra and Aedra are treated in, uh, in, uh, in Elder Scrolls, the elementals are treated there, because it's the closest thing to gods that they know. So, uh, Barbus remakes Spectral, so he's now a more ghostly demonic dog. Uh, Toxicity, Frostbite Giant Spider, which is a Frostbite Spider Companion. Spiderborn, which is a tiny spider companion. Redguard Traders, which adds uh, basically Middle Eastern themed equipment to the world of Scathus that we are creating. And uh, you have camels that are just riding back and forth. And uh, if no Redguard is riding that camel, you can take that camel, so that's another opportunity for mounts. Uh, Pom Pom Krabby Follower, another mod that fits really well in this, and Amazing Followers Tweaks. You're probably familiar with this one. It simply is there to raise your follower count up to five on its base level without any altering of it. 
and that just creates kind of a natural D&D party. And that's what we're going for, and this is a very short section, moving on to what makes this section actually work, which is the monsters. So one of the many, many reasons why I recommend you play this mod list is genuinely that, you know, it's an excuse to use mods that we know, we know would normally be not lore-friendly in Skyrim. And roguelike encounters, as well as the Skyrim monster mod, are of course an excellent example of that. When you have the necessity of needing Tor and Thrykreen, and we already went over in our races section how those are going to be represented in our game, and now through roguelike encounters the Savage North, you will now have humanoid chorus, humanoid ash hoppers, humanoid silt striders attacking you with other groups. You will now have beast headed giants. Again, another thing that would not be supported by the lore in Elder Scrolls, but is absolutely supported by the lore of Dark Sun. And a lot of these you can see are not actually their names and aren't actually their names in game but are the names that I referenced from the Dark Sun Monster Manual and the Dark Sun Creature Catalog and the Dark Sun, I, I'm trying to remember what sources, <laughs> what, what other sources I used, but quite a number of things. <laughs> uh, but uh, all these different official sources, and I went out and I found their equivalents in various areas of these mods. So we have almost everything covered here. The Banshee, which is like the afterlife of the... Um, uh, of the dwarf who does not f uh, fulfill his, his needs. The Pale Hulk matches up with the dwarf physiology immediately, and that's great. Pale Hulks are basically dwarven draugers, and that's really cool. Uh, Rampagers, Slodes, and og Ogrims. This is exactly the same. Airdrake, Wyverns, which are added both by Roguelike Encounters and the Skyrim Monster Mod. Going into the Skyrim Monster Mod, the Water Drake is one that, again, is... Again, Drakes are not even canon in Elder Scrolls, but they are canon here, but yeah, Idfiend, which is the, the Black Drake. Uh, it is actually a lizard-type monster that feeds off of fear. Uh, the Kiri is represented by the Chimera. The Kiri in the lore is a six-legged, horned tiger lion that's also green. It's basically one of the Masters of the Universe mounts, effectively. Uh, Nightmare Beast is Mouth Spider. Mouth Spider is Nightmare Beast. That's It's very scary. I, I don't know if I chose to get pictures for this, but it's it's scary. But yes, no. So the Water Drake is just Water Drake in both cases. Uh, individual mods. Okay, so Cloud Rays. The closest thing we have to that is Snow Rays. Troll Model Replacer. Uh, when I said we had Bragzits, we replaced the trolls with Bragzits. We found a model replacer that literally looks exactly like... Well, not exactly like. It doesn't have the rhino-like head. But it has that rocky texture that the Bragzit is known for. Fourth Unknown Daedroths are our replacement for the Anacor. Talkative Hag Ravens are our replacement for the Aarakocra. Uh, uh, Sertepids are our replacement for the Basrog, which are effectively Triceratops anyway. Old Gods of the Hunt are a replacement for the Belgoli, who are meant to be Fallen Fae. And this obviously has the biggest difference, but that is effectively what the Belgoli are. What they have in common with Old Gods of the Hunt by Mihel is that both are intended to be somewhat skinwalker like figures, despite the Belgoli having, I would argue, still and admittedly different aesthetics. Ruinarchs uh, are meant to be a replacement for the Brog, again, while having different origins. It is important to remember, the Grey cuts you off, so even if you wanted to say they were demons, uh, like Ruinarchs, um, even if you wanted to say that, Remember, the gray cuts you off from the divine. It does not cut you off from the elemental planes or the nine hells. It only cuts you off from the divine. Ruinarchs uh, are a great replacement for the Brog. The Brog are literally four-armed violent giants. Daggeron, Durzog, fourth unknown. Uh, and Daggeron are effectively skinnier scaled dogs. Marshal Leviathan is our replacement for the Fire Drake. And you might be thinking, if you're familiar with the Fire Drake of Athos, hey... You're familiar with the Fire Drake of Athos. Why not use the Tyrannosaurus mod? Why not use the T-Rex mod? And that's because the Fire Drake of Athos is better represented by the Spinosaurus, and the closest thing to the Spinosaurus we have, actually, is the Martial Leviathan. So while there are some versions of this creature that look like a, a two-legged alligator with tiny arms, a giant two-legged alligator with tiny arms, there are other versions in the, in the game world which do have that spine and do have that very scary appearance. Ankylosaurs are a replacement for the Earth Drake, and that is yeah, it's still kind of the best you're going to do there. 
Um, when you have Mo Morrowind <laughs> monsters, uh, that's our just going to add Netches everywhere. You've probably seen Netches everywhere or Ash Hoppers everywhere. That just adds more and more of the Dragonborn DLC elements into our game. Water Hag is our replacement for the Gith or the Gith as they are represented in Athos, which is very similar to the Water Hag. Golem Heart adds Golems as they are depicted actually on the, the page here. Uh, in the, the third row of our little compilation footage. Uh, scamps by Fourth Unknown, again, are represented. They look exactly like the Hedgekin. Uh, the Elites look exactly like the Jakar. Shulks by Fourth Unknown and Shulks by Burb represent the Kank, but sadly we don't have a Kank mount. And the Kestrel are represented by Crows and Ravens because effectively they are a Corvid mixed with a Vulture, which is effectively what Kestrels are in the lore. Now, this was only about, what, this was only about 24 plus 12... Uh, 36 different monsters, really, from the Monster Manual and from the various Dark Sun catalog, but we can do more, and we can definitely do better. And we will definitely add more to this collection in version 3 next year. Um, because, of, because, of course, there's going to be a version 3. Okay, moving on to the People of the Dark Sun and then a miscellaneous section. But before that, just a brief reminder for those watching this, I did mention that we're using Beasts of Tamriel, and for users of that mod, please untick the following creatures under Animals, Toad, Timber Mammoth, Sheep, Glacier Turtle, and Pig. Under Birds, untick Frost Rock, Goose, and Owl. Under Monsters, untick Ancestor, Troll, and Gnarls. Under Races, untick Patru, and under Giants, untick tick yetis named meaning both the boss named yetis options and then also yetis generic by doing this you keep all the creatures added by beasts of tamriel well within an acceptable lore variation for dark sun it's also important to remember that dark sun has well with its initial release a long time ago is comes recommended with any of the general creature catalog monsters but at the same time this is up to you this just seems to be the most lore friendly to me all right, so let's talk about making this a little more cohesive. Let's start by getting rid of a lot of, a lot of that Eclipse dialogue, right? We know about the Sun, Less Eclipse dialogue is of course a great mod for this because to them the red sun overhead would be normal. More to say LE will simply give people more to say. You will have more dialogue options, more speech trees, which is always good. Immersive world encounters makes the whole world feel alive along with the uh, Citizens Animations remix. I mentioned that previously. This is what makes the whole world feel far more lived in. Uh, handicapped Citizens by Mihail is actually a great addition here, seeing people with their limbs ripped off and who have suffered horrifying injuries at the hands of this awful and cruel world, because of course this is a world that also has gore mods installed, and it is a world of gore and limb dismemberment, where people are casually losing their faces and arms, and you can now see the survivors of that. Usually I consider Handicapped Citizens to be... Uh, something of a pretentious mod because of the dialogue that's included with some of these characters, but I will say that now it, it fits so well. Being overdramatic is absolutely necessary here. Cults of Skyrim is a very fun mod. This will literally add just savage cults. It's a great addition to things similar to OBIS, uh, very similar to OBIS, Organized Bandits of Skyrim, where it just adds that great addition of new monstrous cults who have devoted themselves to some type of demonic worship. I really love the idea, and this is actually an, an angle that isn't played on in Dark Sun enough. I would definitely play on it, where you had demon and devil worshippers in the world because there's no god, and the closest thing they could ever have to a god would be a classic Conan-style dark god. That, like, you sacrifice 20 virgins to me, I'll give you a healthy kid. Based. It's like, well, no, that's not based, actually. That's very bad. Uh, realistic conversations and alternate conversation camera. So realistic conversations just means that people will interact with each other more. It rewrites the AI of NPCs to simply have more conversations, similar to what they did in Oblivion. Uh, a little bit of funny there, but again, it goes a long way to making the world feel more lived in. And alternate conversation camera, Ellie. Also, again, immersive world encounters, that literally adds a, a crap ton of ambient side quests. I ran into uh, a couple of wizards who didn't know how to mug people. And that was really great. That was really creative. Ambient, uh, immersive uh, world encounters was phenomenal in that way. 
I was one of the first missions with Chongo Chongo, which I love because the, the Down Syndrome Warrior of Justice runs into the anxiety-ridden Wizard of Evil, and they're basically just two parodies. They're like a parody of Conan meets a parody version of Thothamon, and it was so great. It was so wonderful because both of them suck at their jobs, and I just lo I love Chongo Chongo. I Chongo Chongo. I love Chongo. He does Chongo Chongo, and he's good. Okay, alternate conversation camera, all that does is make things really funny when you're a half-giant talking to dwarves, because it, all it does is shift the camera around while you're talking to two groups, gives you a more dramatic angle. Alright, now against the dying of the light, let's talk about quest mods. We need those sweet, sweet quest mods, don't we? Conflict under the crescent, manually install voice files, uh, that's just basically a mod. Now, when installing this mod... What you should do is you should install it first and then take the zip file out of the zip file. There's there's a zip file in the zip file. That is the extra mod for the voice lines, and you put that in there. They're AI-generated, but they're voice lines. Conflict Under the Crescent is an alternate faction where you can join an alternate version of the Silver Hand, a heroic version of the Silver Hand that the Bandit Silver Hand split off from. And what this does is maintain the integrity of the Companion's quest line should you want to be a Dwarven Dragon Man, in my version, uh, or you want to be a just simple heroic warrior who's there to slay people who have made this dark pact to try to become dragons, especially with the implications in the lore change, which would be, yeah, Codlack White Mane did some pretty messed up stuff uh, to be able to make a deal to become a dragon man. Uh, that you, you, you killed a lot of people. Anyway, uh, now shifting over to if you choose the non-Dragonborn option with the, uh, you know, Skyrim Unbound Reborn, then Death Consumes All DLC Long Quest Mod and the Death Consumes All Unique Weapons Replacers will be your friend. Basically, throughout Skyrim right now, there is a plague, and that plague is slowly turning people into zombies, which of course fits very well with this dying world. This is a type of plague that might be adapted for this dying world, possibly a psionic necromantic plague, and it's very, very cool, but Death Consumes All is an entire DLC long quest mod, as the thing says. Similar to the Shire, actually, and I wanted to talk about that, you are in the, the possibly the coolest situation ever with when it comes to grimdark D&D settings, because we've already talked about Death Consumes All, and we've talked about just the, the horrid implications here. When it comes to the Shire, remember... You're just taking that quick break to go into this brief part of the world, and this would be lore accurate if you're talking about a part of Athos that already has, in majority, still has water flowing through it. And it's only starting to die now, that's why we have no crops, and that's why life is on the way out. But you still have this small area of just genuinely old-school hobbit, dwarf, very Lord of the Rings-esque culture. And God, is it, it's such a good, it's such a good matchup to me. Now, moving on, Winterhold Quest Expansion, literally, you, you might be familiar with this, it's a mod familiar to people both Ellie and Essie, but it just adds more to the Winterhold, who will basically be our preserver faction, and what that does is it just adds a series of more quests to do, it, it stops you from completing the quest overnight, it's just very cool, Winterhold Quest Expansion is a very good way to stop block and give you actually more to do to learn things at the college before you go to the point of becoming an Archmage. Destroy the Dark Brotherhood Enhanced Edition, which literally just adds a series of extra quests after the normal Destroy the Dark Brotherhood questline, if you do want to go down that route, uh, where instead of just reporting things to the Empire, uh, you will instead, uh, you know, after that, get missions to hunt down Cicero, Astrid, all these various different people uniquely rather than just one at a time. You know, the Destroy the Dark Brotherhood quest is usually very lackluster. Destroy the Thieves' Guild Final Version is also a very good one that just lets you destroy the Thieves' Guild. It makes all of the Thieves' Guild very, very killable. It stops Brayloff from pestering you when you first enter Riften. And it also... It, Brayloff. I don't know if I said that name right. The Thieves' Guild is the only quest line that I've always just found annoying and never wanted to do. I, I've never found Fantasy Mafia to be a very interesting... I, I like Mafia movies, right? And I, I like fantasy but something about Fantasy Mafia just doesn't sit right to me. So I've never really liked the Thieves' Guild, and I've always wanted the option to destroy them, so that's a very good thing for me. Uh, Nepo's the Nope is part of a delay the uh, Forsworn quest line, then destroy the, the Silverbloods, allows you to choose your own and 
to the Markarth quest line and makes all the Silver Blood NPCs killable as one method of ending the Forsworn quest line. Headhunter bounties redone. Again, another very lore friendly one for Athos because we're talking about a mod that changes the way uh, bounty hunting is done, uh, increases gold rewards, but in addition to increasing rewards, uh, ceramic rewards in this case, is, in this case, but in addition to that, also you can collect the heads and trophies of bounties, which also moves in a lot with OBIS redone, and that's what gives the, all the uh, organized bandits of Skyrim their own armors. Uh, and these unique armors that you can find as well, but they also have trophies on them that you can take and steal. And if you have certain other mods installed, if you so desire, you can use those trophies and drop those items, and then, you know, obviously put them and position them using Jackson's various mod collection, the renamer, the positioner, things of that nature. <sighs> now, use those blankets. That's a simple immersion mod that makes people use blankets when they go to sleep. Uh, immersive rejections, you will get turned... It's a truly grimdark world, and one of the things about being... <laughs> I, I literally just installed this because I want you to feel as much pain as possible. Uh, if you fall in love, if your character falls in love with one of the NPCs in game, they, they can slap you across the face and say no. They can say no now. Take that. <laughs> NPCs react to necromancy. If you are caught doing magic, they will freak out. They will be scared. They will be confused. Why are you doing magic? I'm scared. I don't know what's going on. Mommy, help. Uh, Civil War Aftermath. So this will basically add a series of various different hangings and just execution methods, which I really love. Arenas of Skyrim, we actually already went over in our first section, but again, this adds arenas all over the world. So you can be a gladiator. Um, you can also look for yourself to see the horrible aftermath of uh, possibly escaped slaves, of people fighting in this sort of war zone. It's, it's very, very cool. Now, for survival, we went very, very simple. Now, again, your survival mod is up to you, but the one most compatible with this overhaul is Last Seed, and that is simply because it is, to me, the most uh, modular. It, you can literally alter it, because the one thing I think you do need for a Dark Sun playthrough, the one mechanic you do need, is Thirst. You do need Thirst. You don't need food, but you do at least need thirst. The idea of water being important, that you are on a hot land that wants to destroy you, that for some reason heat applies to, to metal, but for some reason leather is magically immune to heat, that's okay. I don't care. You've seen the artwork of Braum. Most of the clip art on these things comes from the artwork. of It's amazing. I love it. It doesn't matter. It's great. Campfire, Last Seed, Drugged Animations, Drugged and Drinking Animations, all three of these together uh, will definitely let you have more fun. So, miscellaneous things. Things that I added after starting writing this script, which I didn't really do a script. We were more just doing a podcast. But Native American General Tullius, that would make more sense. People would be of a general darker complexion in uh, Athos because it is hot everywhere and people would slowly adapt. More fruits and veggies, uh, plus better food effects, uh, plus less potions and lockpicks. So, this goes into how... Food and potions are done in Dark Sun. Potions are done in Dark Sun through a combination of magic enchanted fruits and arcane orbs. And actually, if I am correct, there is also Awesome Potions Simplified allow us to have those arcane orbs because that changes the shape of what few potions are left in game two arcane orbs, but better food effects is pretty great because what better food effects does is it adds a more complex effect to every food, but it also gives them effectively the effect of a half potion. So in addition to getting more fruits and veggies, which will act as your potions, you also have better food effects, which will make them more potion-like. Now, wooden chests and wooden strong boxes, that's simply to get rid of more metal and metal-like designs in the world. Chasing the dragon is in addition to whatever survival mod you have. Potions now have a toxicity effect, giving you more of a reason to rely on food rather than potions. Now, sleep to gain experience is a very fun one. Now, there is a bug with this. If you go into toggle-free camera, if you do use toggle-free camera for screenshots, and since true directional movement isn't available for this version of Skyrim, I'm assuming you will go into toggle-free camera for screenshots, you should not, under any circumstances, use the wait function when doing toggle-free camera. If you do toggle-free camera and the wait function, you will gain experience in a random skill, and I have no way of controlling that. But that being said, the mod works fine if you play the game normally. Sleep to gain experience buffers out. It stops you from gaining experience until you go to sleep. 
then all the experience that you would have gained, you finally gain after you sleep. I always love mods like this because I need a reason to visit a tavern. And this is also not to mention the fact that this mod list is in inspired heavily by D&D, &D, and I want a long rest or a short rest to have to level up, and you have to sleep for at least eight hours to be able to level up. That's a very cool thing. Okay, so I said we would have an entire section on giants near the end, and here it is. Giants are people too. Let's start there. One of the key elements of Athos is that there are beast-headed giants, and there are various types of giants, but all of which are very simplistic creatures that sometimes can act like horrid, nightmarish beasts from the darkest plains of hell, but other times are actually somewhat reasonable people, and if you're just local villagers and they're used to you, just like if an animal was used to you, they'd be like, okay, bro, it's fine, you can live. And giants are people too basically makes it so you can just, you know, cripple or make a giant submit to you during the giant slaughter quests or go fight the giant quests that you'll get from, you know, various radiant things. And that will complete the quest instead of destroying them. So it's literally just about reminding them, hey, we can fight back. Now, bolstering their strength is Skyrim for the Giants, with both, uh, both adds new giants as well as giant cannibals, but also adds something very unique to Athos. And I actually just saw Dungeon Dad's video on this before recording this section, which was very fun. I haven't checked his channel in a while. Congratulations to him on making it over 100k subs. I don't know how late that congratulations is. Uh, but... Uh, with Skyrim for the Giants, we actually get Shadow Giants as a boss. Shadow Giants are actually mutant, a descendant from like mutant halflings who sided with Rajat, the first Athasian dragon and dark sorcerer who nearly destroyed the world uh, before being sealed away with, inside the hollow, which is inside the black. The black being the shadow, the, the, the energy source for shadow magic, and also where the Shadow Giants, or technically halflings, or descendant from halflings, live. And they call themselves Shadow People, not Shadow Giants. And then Giant Giants, of course, these are D&D &D Giants, not Skyrim Giants, so they are two times larger. And that is effectively our Giants mods. But in addition to that, and I briefly want to go back to our monster section because I've saved going over these two mods for now, Giant Families and Giant Overhaul by Mihil. What this does is add two different types of female Giants in addition to the female Giants added by the monster mod. But what it also does is add four different variants of giant children. And that is, and again, in addition to the giant ogres and the mutant giants and everything else that would be very canon in Dark Sun and is very canon in Dark Sun, and the beast-headed giants added by roguelike encounters, and the Etmoran ruins, which you can go out and find sand-covered ruins of old giants as well. So giants have a very, very big presence here. Now, Loco Motion, Marble Madness option, that is literally just our retexture of the lock picking mechanic, uh, which will add a marble texture to cover up the previous metal. Morrowind Level Up Music, that's literally just what it sounds like. It adds the Morrowind Level Up Music because it's more fitting than the Viking theme that we would normally hear. And we already went over Rorkstead Wagons and Rorkstead Bath Salt Cliffs in Section 1. That completes... The Skyrim Mod List. Now, if I sounded a bit too rambly and crazy during this video, it's for two reasons. One, I was very excited. Two, whenever I do this project, I try to keep it a lot less formal. And the reason I try to keep it a lot less formal is that I actually want to have fun with it. This is primarily something that I'm doing in my personal life that I am sharing with you. So not really something that I've primarily made for a like sophisticated form. Sophisticated form. Uh, look at me sucking my own dick. Um, but... <laughs> Uh, a form of entertainment that I am primarily presenting in a semi-professional way, which I usually try to do. This is all it is. This is just something I really, really enjoyed doing that I wanted to share with you all. And if you enjoy it, that's great. If not, I understand. Don't worry. My normal content isn't like this. Um, also, this will go in the Dark Sun Exploring Dark Sun playlist. But instead of going in the top row, we will make sure it always stays at the bottom. So don't worry, this will always be the final Dark Sun video you see. It will never be something that gets in the way of you learning about the Sorcerer Kings, or the cool dragon stuff, or the various other races. And I do need to eventually do a Tarek video. Originally I was going to do all monsters in... Athos or all monsters in Dark Sun, but the truth is I should probably just do one monster at a time. I think monsters really do uh, have their own soul and have their own uh, 
have their own kind of heart to them that really does pull in an audience. Regardless, expect more Dark Sun content in the future, and don't worry, the Fist of the North Star video we are still working on, and the All Martial Arts and Nations and Fist of the North Star will be out soon, so will Part 4 of All Gods in Conan. Thank you all for watching, and have a lovely night. Don't worry, more professional content is on the way very soon.